Good morning, and welcome to our video devotion for Thursday, May 13, 2021. I'm glad you've decided to spend some time with me today. Now, if you saw thir- Tuesday's devotion, you know that we're, t- we're talking about what it means to struggle in your relationship with God. You know, over the years, I've uh, developed a theory. I'm going to see if it holds true in your life. Christians who are the most leery of having mountaintop experiences with Jesus are terrified of the spiritual valleys that inevitably follow. Now, if you're a member of Sunset Road Baptist Church, one of the reasons you may have developed this fear is because of something that I've said on numbers of occasions from the pulpit. What I'll say is one of the ways that I know that Sunday has been great is when Monday is terrible. And by the way, that's a good thing. Don't don't get me wrong. Satan is supposed to be upset when good things are happening in the church. Anyway, I think it's time that we get over this fear factor. I guess I could offer to sell you a few No Fear t-shirts, but I think there's a better way to do it. And that is to give you a new way of thinking about what spiritual valleys are. Let's say that you have just spent two weeks at Disney World on a fabulous vacation, and it was on someone else's dime, which made it almost perfect. Every day was spectacular. Every morning began with a fabulous breakfast with Mickey and Minnie. Your days were filled with excitement and adventure as you got VIP treatment in all the parks. And every night ended under a romantic moon with fireworks illuminating the skies. Now think about it. When you finally get back to your home, there's going to be something of a letdown, isn't there? Suddenly all the normal stuff will seem kind of dull and boring and lifeless in comparison to what you've just experienced. You'll feel like someone who's completely crashed and burned. It probably will be very hard to get up and go to work on Monday morning. So here's my point. There was nothing wrong with your home when you got back from Disney World. It's just as good as it ever was. The problem is it probably seems a little bit drab compared to what you've already experienced. The same thing happens in the Christian life. When you go away on a retreat, when you attend a a conference, when you participate on a mission trip, you'll probably feel as close or closer to Jesus than you have at any point in your life. And then when it's come, it's time to come back home, wham, it hits you. The next Sunday morning, Sunday school will seem rather dull. The worship music will sound kind of flat. The preaching will seem a little bit boring and lifeless. And all the spirit and passion that you felt for Jesus during the the past week is over. And you think, in your mind, it's gone forever. Which means that like most Christians, you find yourself in a spiritual valley. Man, my church is dead. The Holy Spirit's pulled up stakes and moved out of town. I need to go someplace else where I can recapture what I had on the mountaintop. Well, again, it's, it's like coming home from Disney World. The problem isn't the church that you've come home to. It's simply your point of comparison. Compared to where you've been and what you've done, things will seem a little bit dull and a little bit drab. But here's what I want you to understand. A spiritual valley is not a form of clinical depression. It's really God's way of saying, okay, I've given you this booster shot. Now it's time to get back to work. I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew 17, and we're going to read verses 1 through 8 together. Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 8. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like sun, and his clothes became white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. I mean, Peter was pumped up. This was a mountaintop experience. 
He didn't want to leave it. While he was still speaking, a huge, a bright cloud covered them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. The mountaintop experience, as great as it was, was now over. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Which is another way of saying, take what you've seen and experience it and use it to strengthen your walk with God. But don't linger here up on the mountain. We've got work to do in the valley. The point of this devotion is really simple. Stop letting Satan terrify you of valleys of despair that don't necessarily exist all the time. See things as they really are. When God blesses you with a spiritual mountaintop, get ready to take up the struggle for His glory in the valley below. You know, God understands that many, the many demands of Christian discipleship can wear you down from time to time. Now, obviously, there are countless blessings to be gained along the way, but sometimes discipleship can be something of a grind, mentally, physically, emotionally, and above all, spiritually. From time to time, you just get tired and you can't help but wonder, when is this going to be over? The answer is, sooner than you think, but not soon enough. Now, I'm not trying to be clever by saying that, but it happens to be true. Here's what I mean. The struggles of Christian discipleship will end when one of two things happens. One, you physically die. Or two, Jesus comes back to earth first. And there is absolutely no way to know when either one of those things will happen. In James chapter 14, excuse me, chapter 4, verses 13 and 14, God's Word says, Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a while and then vanishes. And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, Now brothers, about date, times and dates concerning when Jesus will come again, we do not need to write you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. In other words, it's going to catch everyone by surprise. Now at this point, some of you might be thinking, okay, well, how can I be sure that the struggle will be over when my life on earth is finished? Hey, you don't have to take my word for it. Listen to what the Word of God says. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6-8. through 8. The time has come for my departure. Paul knows that he's going to die soon. I have fought the good fight. He's been a faithful disciple. I have finished the race. He's struggled to do what God has called him to do. I have kept the faith. He has remained faithful to the truth that Jesus Christ had revealed to him on the road to Damascus. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, the reward for a lifetime of faithful service and, and, and righteousness and discipleship, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. This reward is going to be the proof that the struggle is over and the glories of heaven have begun. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for His appearing. With those words of hope, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You so much for this time that we've spent in Your Word today. Father, we pray that the meditation that You've placed on my heart and mind will become uh, something that will be really beneficial for everyone who's listened today and that they will, they will, maybe even if they're in a valley right now, that they will hold fast to their faith, look to You, receive that booster shot they need to get going again and serve you. Father, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Holy Spirit, I love you. And I make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Well, I thank you again for joining me today. I, I hope that these devotions have helped you in your struggles to live by faith. Remember, you're not alone because I struggle with these same things. So let's pray for one another. Well, I love you. Hope that you'll join me again Saturday for another devotion. In the meanwhile, have a great Thursday. I love you. Bye-bye.